A-level business theories, Bartlett and Goshal's model of international growth. Christopher Bartlett, an Australian, and Samantha Goshal, an Indian, worked together at Harvard in the United States in the late 80s and early 90s to develop their theory of how organisations could operate internationally. They considered two different factors and two decisions that firms would need to make in this area. Firstly was the pressure for local responsiveness. This could be low. This means that a firm that produced a particular product could actually sell the same product all over the world without considering any change for local market needs. Alternatively, there could be a high degree of pressure for local responsiveness. This would mean a firm would actually personalise the products it produced depending on its local market. So a burger company could decide to sell hot dogs in the States, kangaroo burgers in Australia, noodles in China, and perhaps even fish and chips in the UK, highly focused on the needs of the local market. The second factor they considered was the degree of integration the firm would have as it grew internationally. This is often thought about as being a cost saving or an economies of scale measure to try and make some savings and operate more as one united company rather than something more decentralised. So for example, a firm may decide, as it grows internationally, to take a low level of integration. As such, as it grows, its subsidiaries across the world will probably be quite loosely attached. They'll be reasonably autonomous and operate quite independent from the parent company. Conversely, a high degree of integration would see the company viewing its new larger international market as one marketplace and perhaps exploiting the pros and cons of that market to its advantages. For example, using this new larger area for manufacture from areas of low cost or particular expertise so that actually it's operating as one global company taking advantage of as many economies of scale as it could. If we factor these, the level of responsiveness and the level of integration, high and low, we end up with another matrix. In the bottom left hand corner we've got here, we have firms that are low responsive to market needs, so it's one globalised product, and don't have a great deal of integration across the globe. A great example of this are wine producers. Wine is known to be from a particular area, so why change it for market needs? It doesn't make sense. And often these exporting companies will actually just export globally and essentially just use any overseas operations for distribution. Equally, KFC. It's the same product across the world and it's something they exploit as their USP and to their advantage. If you arrive in another country, you're looking for some food, it's something you recognise. So you want to see the same sort of menus. As such, it's pretty low responsive and integration is pretty low as well as the different countries will have different operational needs in terms of sourcing food, etc. Second type would be a global strategy. Again, responsiveness is pretty low. It's the same product being sold across the world or the same service. For example, Google across the world is the same product regardless of where you are. This could also be expensive technology such as CT scanning, where actually it's the same product in hospitals across the world. However, there's now this time a higher level of integration. This is because the companies may do R&D in countries where there's specialism and particular skills and technologies and may have production elsewhere to get those economies of scale. This is the same in healthcare as well as chemicals that are traded internationally too. The third approach is the multi-domestic strategy. This is where firms have got a low level of integration still, so their various subsidiaries are quite decentralised. However, they are highly responsive to the local market. One of the best companies that exemplifies this are Nestle. Nestle as a company have very, very unique products in different countries. So if you travel abroad and go into a supermarket, some of the products you see you may not recognise, but look a little closer and you may find they're produced by Nestle. They're highly responsive. And Coca-Cola, only this week, have announced that they're going to produce their first ever alcoholic beverage in Japan. Again, using Japanese alcohol, that's a really specialised product for that local market. The fourth type is transnational strategy, perhaps the hardest to achieve. Highly responsive to market needs with a high level of integration as well. A good example of this is the Ford Motor Company. Ford vehicles in the US are very, very different to the UK, and indeed the rest of Europe. There may well be models that are sold in some markets that are not available elsewhere. In the US, they make a great deal about their pickup and larger vehicles. In Europe, again, it's a different range of products that maybe aren't sold in the States at all. So it's highly responsive to need. However, it's highly integrated. A lot of the engines across their range are shared, and they may be produced in one particular country. R&D for the whole company in certain areas may be done in one country. So a lot of this is still highly integrated. There is control from head office, but it's more in terms of integrating and learning across the organisation. 
where good techniques, good strategies are used in one part of the company, this is used to learn across all of them. So in short, that's Bartlett & Gershaw's International Strategies.